Straws suck. In a minute, I'll tell you why. But first, let's play a quick game. Peekaboo! Was that fun for you? <laughs> Probably not. Then why is it so fun for babies? It's because babies lack object permanence. Object permanence is the ability to understand that an object still exists, even though it's no longer visible. When I cover my face, all of a sudden, I completely disappear in the baby's mind's eye. And then I remove my hands, and like magic, I reappear again out of thin air. At some point, we all reach a developmental milestone in which this game loses its novelty. But apparently, out of sight, out of mind, still exists when it comes to our trash. It's time to grow up, because straws suck. How many of you have ever used a straw? That's OK. I've sucked, too. Single-use items are everywhere and unavoidable. From straws to bags to water bottles, we've become accustomed to living disposable lifestyles based on convenience. And the numbers are staggering. In the US alone, we use 500 million straws every day. That's enough to fill 127 school buses. But what's really crazy is where they all go. For the most part, landfill or litter. You'd be surprised how few are actually recycled. According to the EPA, less than 10% of the total plastic waste generated in 2012 was recovered for recycling. People don't really pay attention to straws. They're micro trash and they easily fall off the radar. But if you walk down a beach and really start to look for them, you'll notice them everywhere. Straws suck. I now know that. So how did I get here on this stage talking trash to you guys? Well, in college, one of my professors would end every lecture with an inspiring quote, one of which was especially meaningful. Never doubt that a group of thoughtful, committed citizens can help change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. This quote really stuck with me. And a few years later, I began collaborating with a group of friends about starting a nonprofit about ocean conservation and plastic pollution prevention. We knew what we wanted to focus on, so the next step was choosing a name. Save the whales and save the oceans was already taken, so we decided to take a different approach. Save the mermaids. We chose the mermaid as our symbol because it acts as an anthropomorphic representation of the aquatic world. That and <laughs> we already had the outfits. <laughs> <laughs> Save the Mermaids is a solution-based nonprofit that promotes personal sustainability. We educate about single-use items and try and provide people with practical alternatives. As mermaids, we understand resources are limited. You can't just call up waste management on your shell phone every time your trash gets full. We make do with what we've got. Mermaids do. <laughs> Uh, one thing you may not know about mermaids is that we love chocolate milk. So what's a girl to do when she wants to blow some bubbles? Well, there's actually a ton of reusable straw options. Multi-use options come in bamboo, glass, or metal. And biodegradable options come in paper, ice, bucatini pasta, or a cookie. And no one will think less of you if you do use a sippy cup. As mermaids, we do school presentations to all ages. But it's always the younger kids who are the most inquisitive. There's always one skeptic in the crowd who will raise their hand and ask, are you guys real mermaids? To which I always answer, we all have the ability to create our own reality. And that's what I encourage you to do. Imagine a future that doesn't even seem real or possible, one that's clean and free of waste. It's OK to start small. Straws suck, but a lot of small things add up to really big things, for better or for worse. For example, the trash gyres. There were actually three other mermaids who were supposed to join me here today, but the currents took them through the Pacific gyre and they got stuck in a trash jam. Oh well, next time. <laughs> gyres are systems of rotating ocean currents. And the center points of these currents are becoming giant growing landfills where plastic outnumbers plankton six to one. This straw 
it's gonna be here when my great, 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 great grandkids are alive because plastic doesn't biodegrade. Instead, it photodegrades. When exposed to light, plastic breaks down into lots of tiny little pieces of plastic that are full of toxic chemicals. Fish eat these little pieces and the toxins bioaccumulate up the food chain, eventually reaching you and me. So why isn't everyone freaking out about these gyres? Well, maybe it's because they're thousands of miles away in the middle of the ocean and much of the plastic is right below the surface of the water and in tiny pieces, not visible to the naked eye, out of sight and out of mind. Giving up straws won't fix the gyres, but it will help shift our collective consciousness. This shift is called the zero waste movement. Zero waste is a whole systems approach that emulates natural sustainable cycles. It involves redesigning product life cycles into a closed loop or cradle to cradle system. The first step in achieving zero waste is establishing a baseline. What exactly is getting thrown out? So in order to answer this, little, this question, we did a little experiment in my office. Unbeknownst to all my office mates, we secretly collected all of the trash in the office for one week. <laughs> and then the following Monday, laid it out for everyone to see. <laughs> Surprise! There it was, laying at our feet, piles of waste that we had completely forgotten about. Looking at my trash was like a bad hangover. It made me sick to my stomach and gave me foggy memories of my bad decisions. Did I really drink that many gas station Slurpees? <laughs> we then proceeded to sort through all of the trash and categorize it into distinct waste streams. The first waste stream we found was recyclables, which accounted for almost 25% of the total trash. And the second quarter of trash was about which was about 25% was compostable. And about 20% of that pile was made up of paper towels. But that's a whole different TED Talk. I'll let you guys watch that one later. <laughs> the third pile I call opportunity materials. These are items such as single-use plates or cups that could be completely removed from our waste stream if we just do a little bit of forethought and planning. Our results were very similar to what is noted by the EPA in that 20% of what you should put in a, in a trash can should actually go to the landfill, and the rest of it has other waste streams. So how can you help save a mermaid? Well, first, I want you to believe in mermaids. Don't lose that childlike sense of wonder. I know zero waste may sound like the unicorn of goals, fanciful and completely unrealistic, but in just, unlike mermaids, <laughs> but in just 18 months, Subaru was able to transform their manufacturing processes to zero waste. By, re, by incorporating zero waste and sustainability into the DNA of their organization, Subaru has been able to manufacture over two million cars in the last 10 years without sending a scrap of waste to landfill. And no, Subaru did not pay me to say this. I drive a Prius but you probably could have guessed that. <laughs> we all forget how much power we have to influence the behavior of others. In all of our brains, we possess specialized neurons called mirror neurons. These neurons fire both when you perform an action as well as when you watch someone perform that same action. So we're all unconsciously mirroring the behavior of others. So be a positive example. If you see a piece of trash laying around, Pick it up. Zero waste is the result of a lot of small changes, and those changes come from every level of employee. So don't be afraid to speak up. The next time your office is having a little get together, ask everyone to bring their own plates or cutlery and support companies that use less packaging. Try buying in bulk versus individually packaged items. And make sure to know the recycling guidelines in your county. They vary from town to town. Recycling is the least you can do, so let's all do it like we mean it. There's an old saying in business that if you watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. So if we all focus a little more on the details, 
the big picture will fall into place. You're either helping or hurting. There is no neutral. We can't keep playing peekaboo with our trash. Just like sands running through an hourglass, all of our resources are finite. And once those grains run through, we'll be out. I want everyone to take a minute right before I leave you and raise your hand when you've thought of one thing that you can do to help save a mermaid. Just one thing that you can do to reduce the amount of waste that you create. I know what mine is. Straws suck. Thank you.